Hey guys, Pin Master here. I uh, want to tell you a little story. Maybe it'll, it'll uh, help you, maybe it won't, but and it's a story of my past and one of the things that led me in the direction that my life took. Um, just like everybody's life, my life could have gone a lot of different directions at different times. Um, and one of the early times I started training really young, um, I started doing martial arts because I wanted to be tougher because growing up in Hawaii, being white, I just always heard stories and nightmares about, you know, Kill Howley Day and what was going to happen. Um, and, and that's true that most of those stories were, you know, they were exaggerated. But, I mean, everybody knows that grew up in Hawaii or, you know, from Hawaii, uh, especially in the or, you know late 60s, early 70s. Um, there was a lot of, you know, kill Howley Day attitudes and, you know, fucking Howley this, fucking Howley that, go back to the mainland, give me your lunch money, what, what are you looking at, you know, stuff like that. So, whatever. Uh, so, when I started training, I started training because in elementary school, I knew once it got to junior high school, uh, my junior high school was going to be a lot tougher than my elementary school, and I heard, you know, the stories, so I started training, and I thought it would make me tougher in case someone tried to take my lunch money. So, um, I got to junior high school, and it was, this, you know, it's a lot rougher than, than elementary school, and um, there was a rough kid, uh, his name was uh, David Silva, um, and he was a tougher kid at school, and he was a bigger kid, and um, I always knew who he was, and we didn't hang out in, different, you know, in the same crowd, but um, I was already training with Walter Godin, so I was actually getting tougher, because Walter Godin, if anybody knows uh, him, he had a really tough gym, uh, Godin School of Self-Defense, and he was a tough guy. I mean, in and out of prison, um, he was just a badass guy, and he was, I mean, he wasn't like Miyagi. He was my mentor growing up in a lot of ways, but it was, he was a tough guy. I mean, that's all I can say about it. So I started kind of emulating and wanted to be the tough guy instead of the, you know, I could have gone and been the drug addict route which a lot of the Howley kids did, or I could have been the surfer dude route, which a lot of the Howleys did. Um, but I wanted, to be, I wanted to be the tough guy, and not many of the Howley kids wanted to take that route and didn't. So uh, I'm not saying it's better or worse, but that's just, for whatever reason, that's the route I wanted to go. Um, so one day, uh, um, I was hanging with my guys and, and me and... Me and David uh, kind of hang out. You would hang out with similar crews now, because I started hanging out with a little rougher crews um, groups. Um, I'm saying crews. I don't even know why. Um, but one day we got into an argument in the cafeteria, and um, he shoved me, and we started fighting. And everybody, you know, you know, all of a sudden everybody comes in, and watches, and the fight got broken up like instantly. Uh, one of the teachers came or something. It got broken up. Um, uh, David said, it was a Friday, and David said, okay, Monday we're going to fight, and we're going to go to our bathroom, which is in the back of the school and the campus, and it's where a lot of the teachers, it was kind of the more isolated bathroom. So um, I knew it was going to be on. So that weekend, I just kept thinking about it. I'm going to fight with him. It's going to be big, and, you know, I got I got I can't lose, and I was nervous. Um, so come Monday... Uh, 10 o'clock, we meet at the bathroom, and everybody was there, and it was a big, you know, it's a big bathroom, and everybody's, you know, there's all people all around watching, so I show up, uh, David shows up, and the fight's on, and we start fighting, and I kicked him, and I punched him, and, and um, his nose was bleeding, and I was winning, I was, I was catching him with kicks and punches, and then... Uh, the vice principal came and broke it up, I guess because, you know, there was so much commotion. But I won the fight. And everybody saw that. And uh, he was bleeding out of his nose, and, and there was blood in the bathroom on the, on the sinks. Uh, I know that because that, um, <laughs> that, that, that janitor from junior high school never talked to me again. She could not stand me, a uh, little old Filipino lady. Uh, she couldn't stand me because she had to clean up the blood and she thought it was my fault because I made this kid's nose bleed. So she never talked to me again. She would just, if I walked by her, she would look the other way. 
Um, anyway, so I beat David Silva, okay? And that was big because he was like one of the tough guys in school. So from that point on, I was kind of known as the tough kid. And um, I might not have been the toughest kid in school, I don't know, but I definitely, it could have gone a lot of different ways. Like, number one, I could have just not fought him at all and, and, and said, no, I'm not going to fight you and not showed up. And I'm sure that would have put me in one direction, you know, in everybody's eyes and perception and the way they treated me. Or I could have, you know, fought him and lost. And, you know, probably that wouldn't have been that bad. I mean, at least I went out there and fought him. Not many of the Howley kids were fighting guys like David Silva. Um, but, I, but I fought him and won. So I was looked at in a different light from then on. And it gave me a, a, a lot more confidence and it gave me, uh, you know, a lot more pride. And, and you know, I, I never became a bully. I was never a bully in, in school. But I knew that I was going to be one of the tough guys. So that followed me in my fight career. That followed me in the gym at, at Godin's gym. That followed me, you know, when I got into high school. I was always known as that tougher kid. So even when I went to high school, that reputation followed me. And that it kind of snowballed from there. And, you know, I was fighting more. Won the Golden Gloves and stuff like that. But anyway... That one fight, it could have gone so many different directions. So it changed my life. And um, what is your uh, David Silva story? I know you guys have one. Uh, why don't you guys comment? I want to hear your David Silva story. What story, whether when you were a kid, a teenager, or a young adult, changed your life the most? I don't know if this one changed my life the most. I have other you know, stories and other things that happen in my life that change it from one angle to another. Um, and I'll be talking about those more in future blogs. But this uh, David Silva story was probably one of the earliest ones that probably changed my life in a, in a certain direction uh, the most. Um, like I said, what changed your life the most? What is your David Silva story? And by the way, for you locals over there that are watching this and you guys knew me at Kamek Intermediate, David Silva is not his real name. I'm just using uh, an alias. Okay, but he was a big, chunky uh, Portuguese guy. Ended up in prison. You, you figure it out. If you know who it is, tell me. But anyway, what's your story, guys? Tell me.